Hey everyone, before we begin, I want to give a shout out to the Spirit Science Forums. The forums now have over 3,000 individuals who are consciously participating in the discussions about the universe. If you want to ask questions, share information and videos, and meet your spirit family, the Spirit Science Forums are a great place to start. Everyone is very caring and loving, nobody is left out, and it's a beautiful place to just hang out. And now, without further ado, let's talk about 2012. There can be no peace until we find peace within. Wow, 2012, here we are at long last. Many cultures have been awaiting the time we're in right now for thousands of years. And one of the biggest, most prominent cultures that have brought 2012 to the forefront of our awareness are the Mayans through their long count calendar. Now, the Mayan calendar is actually the most detailed, specific, and accurate calendar on the planet, but to go into depth on it right now would take a very long time. We will dive into specifics of the calendar later on, but for now let's take a look at the general prophecies that were foretold thousands of years ago, all about the time that we're in right now. According to the Mayans, the solstice on December 21st, 2012, precisely at 11.11 a.m. Universal Time, marks the completion of the 5,125 year great cycle of the Mayan long count calendar. 2012 also marks the completion of the 26,000 year procession of the equinoxes cycle, which we discussed in lesson five. According to the calendars, it also signifies the end of a 144,000 year cycle, a 78,000 year cycle, and a 26 million year cycle. The 2012 date marks the completion of this world age cycle, but it does not signify the end. Well, it kind of does. It's the end of what we know and into a transition of something new. It is a transitional state, but it definitely does not mean this. Although, because anything is possible, I won't say this isn't a possibility. Ultimately, we can't know what's going to happen, but we do have control over the potential of what we experience. We'll come back to that. We need to understand that the 2012 prophecies are signaling to us to wake up and realize that these times on Earth are very important. We are living in a landmark time in the history of this planet. We are collectively, as a species, approaching a crossroads that is calling out to us to participate in our fullest capacity. Let me show you a diagram to try and demonstrate just how important this is. First, this is how DNA works. See how you can basically map it out like a story? Here's the beginning, which could be seen as creation, or start of a cycle. And then it moves outwards, expanding and moving into all potentials, until it reaches its peak in the middle. It stretches far out and then begins moving back towards the center, back to its source. But it will be a new space that it now exists in. Then it returns back to a center point, where it ends, or transitions, into a state where it expands out once more, continuing its infinite cycle of expansion and contraction. One could also say that it moves through the chakras, moving from a low frequency to an incredibly high frequency, where it will unite and transition out once more. Now think of the human species like this, and 2012 being that point of unity where everything comes together, right before starting off again and expanding out into something new and different. This is basically what's happening right now on Earth, but there's a catch. We have absolutely no idea how we're going to expand out because there are so many potentials with what's happening on the planet right now. Let's go over a few of the basic ones. The first potential is that we all wake up and raise the vibrations of the entire species to a level of love, cooperation, and peace among all human beings. If this happens and 2012 comes to a close, then we may experience what many religions, prophecies, and ancient civilizations described as ascension. Everything is frequency, and supposedly the planet and everyone on it could experience a dimensional shift, where we move into a higher frequency where even more is possible than on this dimensional plane. We could then start building garden cities and utopias that work harmonically and in tune with nature and each other. Everyone could live in paradise, living from their heart in beauty and splendor. Although it may take a while to get there, by making the appropriate changes right now and setting those intentions, it becomes possible to create those realities sooner than later. A second potential could involve less of us waking up and much of the world becoming even more intense than the book 1984. Now, there's already way too many beings of light all around the world who are now awake and moving forward on the path of healing themselves and the world around them. And if you're watching this, odds are you are too. So it's silly to think that the earth could end up like Mars from self-destruction. 
Though, we must be aware that there is still a control system in place, and we have to work with these frequencies in order to heal the planet. I don't think we have anything to worry about, though. Perhaps a third potential involves a combination of both. Maybe the beings who raise their own vibrations will move onto the next level of life, and begin working with the frequencies of the planet from a higher spectrum. Maybe then the beings who stick around on the lower frequencies end up slowly working together through the darkness and eventually raise up as well, or even do something completely different, like merge their consciousness into technology like the Borg. I mean, I know our current technology isn't anywhere near there yet, but Earth doesn't have to die even if the people in the lower frequencies keep warring. They're just potentials, and hey, they're pretty fun to think about. On the topic of pole shift and ascension and all that, that's another thing I want to say that although many religions and cultures speak about this, including the Christian Bible, this is still something of an unknown. A dimensional shift would be absolutely amazing, but we do not have to change dimensions to change the world. We won't know it until it happens, if it happens. But if it does, it would be good to be prepared, right? We'll come back to this in a bit. Now, regardless of all of the potentials we can come up with, let's bring it back to this diagram. Think about how this applies in your life. Every day you live could be seen as one mini spiral. However, seven small spirals make one larger one across the seven small ones. This is a week. Then several weeks create a month, several months create a year. You can map that over your life and see from birth to death, which is just like the mind calendar, not the end, but a transition into new level of life. We discuss death in lesson nine, astral projection. Consider 2012 like this diagram, where there are not just several smaller cycles ending, but some very large ones, all at the same time in different windows. Some of them are four year windows, some of them are hundred year windows, but all of them essentially are wrapped around this center point. This is where we are right now, not yet at the end of the cycle, but getting very close. This is such an exciting time for us. As mentioned earlier, we cannot know what is going to happen, and I'm not going to tell you it's going to be this or that, because I don't know either. We will change the outcome depending on our being. What's going to happen? You decide. In lesson one, we discussed how you create your own reality. Many people argued that it didn't make sense when others influence your life from out of the blue. What we didn't discuss, but probably should have, is that we are a collective. We are one species. You create your own reality, but we are all co-creating our realities together on a much broader scale. Think of an ant colony. Each individual ant decides where they want to go, what food they want to collect, and how they want to do it. But collectively, they are all working together to gather food for everyone and do what is necessary for the group, whether it be digging tunnels or gathering leaves. Humans are like that except our mentality of do what's best for everyone is replaced with get enough money to survive, don't worry about the starving people on the street, help giant entities known as businesses take more money from the people, and don't question what's going on. We're doing it to ourselves, and we're doing it together. Together is the key word here. Together, we can break through barriers. Together, we can absolutely change the world, but we can only do it together, not individually. Individually, we can change our own individual world, which is where we need to start. When we learn that we can all get along with each other, regardless of race or belief or level of consciousness, we learn that absolutely anything is truly possible. But it has to start here, in your heart. In the episode, Power of the Heart, we discussed how the heart's electromagnetic field has the capacity to not just affect your body, but those all around you. This means that if you raise the frequency of your heart and your being, you will essentially emanate love and high vibrations all around you, wherever you go. You will be way more powerful than a crystal. Now, let's look over everything we discussed today and try and wrap it all up. Just how exactly does all of this fit into one coherent puzzle? This year is probably the most important year in human history since the fall of Atlantis. This is the year when everything comes smashing together and we see what we've created for ourselves. This giant web of a society that just doesn't work and only serves to put more people into poverty and chaos. What are we going to do about it and how are we going to get there? Where do we wanna go? I guess the biggest question is, how does one prepare? The answer lies within. If we are able to look within our hearts and find that love for everyone and everything, including ourselves, this transitional window that the Mayans predicted thousands of years ago will go by so smoothly. Through mass numbers of individuals doing just this, everyone will begin to treat each other better and begin working harmonically through a new state of understanding that we are all one being. Mother Earth is like an organism, just as we are, and we can all work together in harmony to create a beautiful utopia where we all live together in peace and harmony and abundance. This is the nature of the shift we are going through and experiencing today. And although we may be a long way away before living in a planet-wide utopia of peace, love, and abundance, Today, we are laying the foundations and groundwork for this new system. And as we discussed before, 
the foundation has to first begin within ourselves, wherein after we will translate that into everyday lives and manifest it into the physical reality we live in. Yes, there will still be war and there still will be chaos. I'm not saying that will just disappear instantly, but we have to be able to move through that with the state of love and peace within our own hearts and bringing that to everyone around us. No matter what happens on this planet, no matter how good or bad things may seem, stay in your heart. Keep filling yourself up with love, even if there is none all around you. It is so important that we keep ourselves tuned to a high frequency. It will make all the difference. Control your emotions, live in the moment, and don't forget to have fun. There's a lot more we can go into, and we do look forward to breaking into more discussion on the forums, where there is a Shift of Ages discussion thread as well. Also, in Lesson 15, we talked about the heart and breath work. Well, I want to give a shout out to our friend Guru Yotam, who has provided a beautiful video teaching all about breath. Go and check it out and send him some love. If you like the video, he may just make some more. Namaste, everyone.